What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 overview. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new homebrew app by Lightning Mods called Items Flow, which is a game manager homebrew, the first of its kind, I suppose. Now it's very similar to the cover flow that's built into the homebrew store, but it's basically like a standalone app version of that. Although it's got a bunch of new features built in that you will not find in the homebrew store version. So we're going to take a look at that here in this video. It is a closed beta right now, so there is no full release of this homebrew app. You will not find a download link in the video description. However, if you're watching this in a few weeks or a few months, once the full version comes out, I will, of course, add the download link so you can check for it there in the video description if you're watching this in the future. But we're just going to be taking a look at it here and showing you guys all the different features that this homebrew app has. Obviously, the full release will probably have a few more than what I'm going to show you here in this video. So let's go ahead and dive right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and run the application. So this is what it looks like, just like the cover flow for the homebrew store, except a standalone app version. So since it's a game manager, it's more like a kind of custom home menu for your PS4, for a jailbreakable PS4. So it has a lot of options built in that tailor to a jailbroken PS4 that you're not going to find, obviously, in the normal PS4 home menu. So what you've got, of course, is a list of all of your PS4 apps here on the home screen. You also have, of course, the title ID that shows below them. You've got your storage in the bottom left-hand corner. You've got the date, the system version, temperature, as well as the item flow version in the top right-hand corner. And then down in the bottom right, you've got options to reload the apps with triangle. You can change category with square. So if we hit that, it will change it to only show uh, the retail games right here, which I don't have any retail games installed, so nothing shows up. We can press square again, and this will load us just the fake packages. So all the fake packages, which is all of the apps that I have essentially on my system right now. And then we've got uh, square again, if we do that we will get just the games. So if you just want your games showing up, you can do that. And now we only have games showing. None of the homebrew apps or emulators are showing up there. And then of course, if we press it again, we will now get our uh, homebrew apps. So homebrews and emulators now are the only things showing up. So you can switch between the different categories. Of course, you can press L2 to switch the categories back to default, which just shows all of the apps that you have installed on the system. So if we select one of the games here, so Killing Floor 2, we can of course launch the game by selecting the launch option. We also have a dump option. If I select that with X, we have the option to dump everything, the entire game plus any updates or DLC that's installed. If we press right, we can then dump the base game only, or we can dump just the patch, or we can dump the remaster. So if the game is a, a remastered package, you can dump that as well. And then we also have dump DLC only. And then we also have the option to back up the fake package, which is interesting because this is the function that a lot of people were wanting from the easy package extractor homebrew app from Lappy that was discontinued. Well, you can do it from within here, just back up the fake package. As you can see, when I select the option to dump the game, what it does is it automatically launches the game and then it suspends the application, goes back into the item flow homebrew app automatically it does all that automatically and then it shows you all the files that it's transferring once it's finished it will tell you that it has completed without errors if there wasn't any problems doing the backup and then you'll have it backed up to your usb you can actually change the dump location in the settings which i'll show you later uh, which means that you can also choose to dump the game to a folder on the hard drive instead of a usb and then you could use ftp or something to transfer it to your computer so it has those options too so if we press circle, that'll exit out of the dump section. So a few other options, I'll go to CTR Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. So we also have the uninstall option. And here you can either uninstall the entire app or you can just uninstall the patch. You also have game save options. If we select this, I have one save on here. So for example, there's one save found. I can back up all saves and that will copy it over to my USB drive right there. And then you can also import a save as well. Now it must be a decrypted save according to the description at the bottom. It says import and resign a decrypted save a folder from storage. So I did try this with like a random save file and it didn't detect it. So, so I guess it must be in a specific format in order for it to work. You also have trainers. So for example, if we use Bloodborne, we've got the trainers option. So if we select this, you can see it fetches trainers for selected games. So if we select this, 
we've got different patches that you can apply. So we can apply, these are basically the, the patches from Illusion, just like we can use the uh, Gold Hen Cheats Manager to apply these patches. You can also do it from within the Items Flow Homebrew app now as well. So for example, we've got uh, Bloodborne Skip Intros. It says patch enabled is false, but if I press X, it will enable the patch. So Skip Intro. And then we can also go along. There's, you know, frame pacing fixes. We've got chromatic aberration, disable motion blur. There's our 60 FPS patch. We'll enable that. And then, of course, we can also enable the resolution patch for 720p. And then if I launch the game, I can just hit launch. And it should launch the game with those patches applied. Do you see how quickly it launches the game as well? You know, it doesn't have to suspend the application and then launch the game, which takes a while. And there we go. Three patches applied. It doesn't have to do any of that. It just launches the game super fast. Really, really handy. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. It should skip the intros because we have that patch applied. So it shouldn't give us the normal intros. It should take us straight into the main menu. We do get a black screen for a little bit here. But there we go. We're now in the game. And you can see we have the 60 FPS patch applied uh, from Lance McDonald. So that has been applied there straight from the homebrew application from Items Flow instead of uh, having to go through something like the, the Gold Hand Cheats Manager, which is still, you know, a good way of doing it too. But the cool thing about this is that you can apply the patches and then launch the game from here as well. So yeah, quite a few options there. Uh, also, some other options that are in here, if I select this again, you can actually hide the app. So app visibility. So this will hide, it's just, this just basically sets the, the visible flag in the database to zero, so it's invisible which basically just hides the app. So if there's any apps like system apps that you don't use, then you can disable them from within here instead of having to extract the database file manually and, you know, changing the, the data in the database, you know, and saving it and copying it back over. This is much quicker. You can just select whichever apps you don't want and you can hide them on the home screen from here by changing app visibility to hide app. And of course we do want Bloodborne visible. Uh, you can also change the icon, of course. You can change the, you know, the cover icon on the home screen. You can also change the app name as well. So right now it's been displayed as Bloodborne TM. If I want to get rid of the TM, so it's just Bloodborne, then I can just go ahead and delete that and hit done. And there we go. Okay, so it requires a reboot to apply changes, I guess. No, apparently it doesn't. There we go, Bloodborne. So it changed it there. So we can head back in here. We can also move the app to the USB drive. Move digitally downloaded content to USB. It uh, doesn't affect items flow. So yeah, you can you can move the game to the USB and you'll still be able to launch it from here. Uh, basically like app to USB. I guess this is just kind of incorporating that function. And then you can also restore a game that is on the USB back to the hard drive. Although the only caveat with this is that it does say that it will delete any DLCs and save data for the game if you're restoring it from the USB. So uh, be aware of that if you end up using this uh, for that purpose. So yeah, those are all the options there for the actual game, but there's a ton of other customization options that are built in here. So if we hit the settings option right here on the menu, we have a lot of different options. So we have the dumper path, which is the path to, you know, when you dump your games, it's by default going to try and dump it to the USB drive. But like I said, you could change that to the hard drive instead. So we could select this. This gives us a little file manager so we can go into the data folder. And then from the data folder, I guess I could create a new folder with L2. And then I'll call this one dumps uh, for games. So game dumps. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Folder created. Does it show the folder in here or do I have to reload it? No, there we go. So it's in there. So we can select it. And then of course we can just hit select folder and there we go. So now whenever I use the dump option on any game, it will dump it to the data folder in that dumps folder instead of the USB drive. So you can do that. Gives you more customization there on how you want to dump your games. You've also got check for updates. So that will just check for any updates for the application. So you can sort apps by alphabetical by their title ID, or you can just have it random. I would prefer by the title ID. You can set as default dashboard. So yeah, when this is enabled, it will basically change this to be kind of like the home menu so that when you're in a game and you want to exit the game and you hit the PS button, it will take you back into the, the homebrew app here. And then I guess there'll be an option to close the game from within here. And then 
yeah, you can basically use this as your main dashboard, as your main home menu instead of the, the normal one. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty handy. That'll be a, a new feature because right now when you launch a game from within items flow and then you want to close it by hit, hitting the PS button, it will just take you back to the normal home menu to close the game. And then you have to like manually select items flow to go back into items flow. So having this turned on will just kind of simplify that whole process. So it'll always take you back into items flow. So that's pretty handy. We also have rebuild fake package database. So if you have a database corruption, instead of having to use those Python scripts, you can instead run this option, which should uh, hopefully add all of your packages back to the database uh, so that you don't lose any of your stuff. Also a very handy feature. We also have a themes installer option. Now I do have, there is one theme that's been created at the time of recording, and that is the 4th of July theme. So I'm gonna select that here, I have installed it. So if I go back to the root directory, if I go into the mount folder to get to my USB, I do actually have a few things in here. So I have the theme, so I'm gonna select the theme and there we go, it installs it, it says five seconds to reboot and then it will reboot items flow with the theme installed. Okay, there we go. So you can see here, we have the 4th of July theme playing right there. So that is how you install themes. Themes just come as a zip file. You just load them in there in the settings and then you can have these custom themes running right here, which is pretty nice. Now there's more customization options too, of course. You also have the option to change the background MP3 path. So background MP3 will allow you to just select. You can actually select a whole folder as well, it says. So basically you can select an MP3 file or a folder containing MP3s. And then I guess it will just loop through each MP3 file one after the other as your background. So I do have one music file added. If we head into, again, the root directory. Once again, there probably is a quick, maybe maybe you should add a quick shortcut to access the USB. Um, but yeah, if we go to the USB drive, that's not USB. I need to go to the mount folder, then go to USB zero. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna go to item flow and then I have this background music.mp3 that I can select and it just immediately starts playing it right there. And this is just the background music to the Apollo save tool, where, which I quite like. So I went ahead and grabbed that. So yeah, you can hear it starting to play there, but I'll kind of mute it or I'll reduce the volume for now uh, so that uh, it doesn't get too distracting. So we've got show button controls on. So once you learn how to navigate the application, you can turn those off uh, for a cleaner look. Uh, you also have open PS4 menu, so you can do this and select settings. That will just open directly into the settings and then go back to the app. We can also, you know, do things like open the power saving settings. So those are the options right there. I think that's the only two it has right now. There's a package installer, so you can select packages from a USB drive and install them directly. Yeah, let's use this the way we should be using it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, delete PS4 Explorer. Not recommended because it's a fantastic application. But we're going to go ahead and install game and app. Uninstall, yes. We'll get rid of it. And then I'll reinstall it using the package installer. So it's gone right now. And then we're going to go ahead into the settings. And then we're going to go down to package installer. And then once again, I'm going to go to the mount folder. And then the USB zero. And then I'm going to take the package file that I have on the USB and select it. And there we go, installing. See how this works, package installed successfully. And does it show up in here? Okay, it's not showing up in here, so I'm gonna have to hit the triangle button to reload apps, and then it should show up in here. Uh, where is it? Yep, there we go, PS4 Explorer is back. So yeah, you can install and uninstall apps from here, all from within the app. And then, uh, yeah, so that seems like that's pretty much it. We also have console power controls. So you can shut down or restart from here. Although there is also an advanced settings option with R1. So if you press R1, you get even more options. Now, most of these are the same options. So sort by apps, theme installer, rebuild package database. I've already gone over all of these. Show button control, open PS4 menu. Yeah, you also have a few additional options. So change font. So you can also change the font of all the text on the app. So right now it's just using a default font uh, for the PS4, but of course you can put a font on your USB, a TTF file for the font on a USB and select it and to change the font. 
You can also uh, download covers as well. Uh, you can also have the option to reset customization. So if we do this, it will reset the 4th of July theme back to the default theme. Uh, we won't bother downloading covers because we already got it. Yep, there we go, as you can see. So that resets everything. It does not reset the, the music though. So I'm not sure how you disable the MP3. That, that might not be possible in the beta. Uh, so anyway, head back down here, go back to advanced options. So there are a few more things, I think. Uh, so you've got reset customization, reflections. You can turn reflections off, not recommended. I think this looks way worse. It looks much better with reflections on. So I would highly recommend you leave reflections on, but it may run faster without the reflections enabled, which might be why you, you'd want to turn them off. Uh, also, you've got background image, so you can also change the background image instead of applying a theme. If you just want to change the background, you can do that as well. So I do have a background image to apply just to show you guys what that looks like as well. So if we head into USB zero, item flow, we've got this background. And as you can see, this is what it looks like with a static background. So you can do that as well. You can just add a background image instead of a full theme. Um, or you can install like one of the official animated themes. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Change background image, startup cover message. Not sure what that's about. Uh, maybe we'll turn that off and see what that changes. I'm not too sure. But yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. I think we've covered pretty much everything that's in this right now. So yeah, pretty awesome application. I like the idea of it. So yeah, this seems to be kind of the first attempt to really make a kind of replacement for the home screen, for the home menu. Obviously, it's not a complete replacement because it doesn't have all of the options that the normal PS4 home menu has. But of course, it's got all of these additional options that you will not find in the normal home menu, like the ability to dump the game and the package, you know, export the save data, import save data, you know, all that kind of stuff, apply patches directly to the game, and then you can launch the game from within the app. Uh, so yeah, and it does say trainers as well, which there doesn't appear to be any trainers that I've seen so far. It's mostly just patches, um, but that could be because we only looked at Bloodborne. So maybe if we look at another game, there may also be cheats that we can apply from within here as well. So uh, yeah, it's basically like a, a one app does all kind of thing. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth look here at the Items Flow Homebrew app. This again is just a beta preview. And the full release should hopefully be coming probably before Christmas or around Christmas, I think. I believe Lightning Mods is wanting to get it out, you know, before Christmas or around then. So, yeah, it should be coming fairly soon. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for it. I'll put a download link in the video description once the full version comes out. And if there's any significant changes in the full version compared to this preview, then I'll probably do an updated video once the full version releases. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one too. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll also leave uh, Lightning Mod's donation link down in the video description if you want to support his work. And uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.